Hi class, so today we're going to talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Previously, we talked about part one. So today, part two in part two of the FTC, uh, you will see that we have a method to evaluate the integral and it's going to be really easy and so much faster compared to what we did in 5.1. I'm just going to go straight into a theorem for you. Make sure that for every single theorem, we have to check for the condition. So the condition of the FTC2 is uh, F has to be continuous on a closed interval AB. Then the integral um, from A to B, F of X dx, is going to be the antiderivative F of B minus F of A. So hopefully you still remember how to take the antiderivative. All right. So let's start with example five. We want to evaluate the integral from one to three e to the x power dx. So hopefully you still remember the antiderivative of e to the x power is just e to the x power. And then we want to evaluate from one to three. This is how we write. Um, this is the notation for um, evaluating integral. So we get e to the third power e cubed minus e to the first power, and there we have it. Um, so you can see that FTC2 says we can use any antiderivative uh, f of f. So we may as well use the simplest one, which is e to the x power instead of e to the x power plus five or e to the x power plus c. Um, moving on to example six, hopefully you recognize the question. We want to find the area under the parabola y equals to x squared from zero to one. So in 5.1, I, uh, I don't know if you remember, we take the limit of the Riemann sum and we get the area under the curve. But this time is gonna be so much easier so the area is going to be from 0 to 1. The function is x squared dx. Now, we evaluate, um, well, I'm sorry, we integrate um, x squared. If you take the antiderivative of x squared, it's going to be x cubed over 3. And we want to evaluate from 0 to 1. So we just plug it in, 1 to the third power over 3 minus zero cube over three. So that's going to give you one third, which is what we got in 5.1 when we take the limit of the Riemann sum. Um, the limit of um, the, the Riemann sum, um, all the areas um, under the curve, all the areas of the rectangle under the curves. Hopefully you still remember that. All right. So for example seven, we want to evaluate um, from three to six d of x, uh, I'm sorry, dx over x. As you can see right here, you should rewrite. So we can recognize the function. It's one over x dx, okay? And the antiderivative of that It's just ln of x. Okay. Make sure you still remember that the, the derivative is actually ln of the absolute values of x, but we're dealing with a positive number here. So um, you can just drop it, right? So technically we have ln of absolute values, but because we're dealing from three to six, so positive, we just, I can just drop it. It's gonna be L, uh, ln x, three to six, and then we just evaluate ln six minus ln three. Hopefully you still remember the property of log so it's going to be ln 6 divided by 3, so is ln 2, okay? All right, so that's the area 
under the curve. Now, what I want is to find the area under the, uh, under the cosine curve from zero to B. Okay, and we restrict the interval, the close interval from zero to pi over two. So, first of all, hopefully you still remember the antiderivative of the cosine is just sine of x. Okay, don't get confused. The derivative of sine is cosine. So, and the antiderivative of cosine is sine. Okay, so we have the area from zero to b cosine of x dx. And like I said, the antiderivative is sine of x. And then we want to evaluate from zero to b. Okay, which is what? Sine of b minus sine of zero. Sine of zero is just zero, so we ended up with sine of b. Okay, so let's say if b is pi over two, we have proved that the area under the curve, uh, the cosine curve, the area under cosine curve. from zero to pi over two is sine pi over two. In this case, it's gonna be one, okay? If you try to graph um, the, the function, you can see it. Uh, you, can, you can graph the function cosine of x, you will see it. All right, now, I evaluated this one already. However, you see, we're trying to find the area and then somehow we get a negative number right here, okay? So something wrong with this calculation, okay? So um, you can go back and take a look at the, um, the graph of one over x squared, right? So sorry about that. F of x, one over x squared is positive, right? So I'm going to go back to the property. You see the property right there. We have a constant. Anyway, I can I can just rewrite so the function is positive, the integral of the function has to be positive. And somehow over here, we have a negative number. So something wrong, right? So um, when the function is positive, the integral is positive. And this function right here is positive or could be equal to zero and somehow we ended up with a negative number. The problem right here is the interval. You see on the interval, negative one, three, F is not continuous. So you cannot use a theorem, okay? Remember I told you about checking the condition? This is it, F is not continuous, okay? So I can just let, you see, from, from negative one to three, if I let X equal to zero, 
1 over 0 squared is undefined. This is a problem right here. You see that? So it's not continuous at 0. Therefore, we cannot apply FTC. All right, so just to recap, this is the fundamental theorem of calculus. So you can see right here, the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have part one is that, right? So if g of x is the integral of f of t dt, then g prime of x is gonna be f of x. Make sure you have this right there. Okay, otherwise you have to take care of the chain rule. Now, FTC2 is going to be the one method we're going to use from now on, which is taking the antiderivative every time we're dealing with uh, integral. Okay.